Hello everybody, this is me, Johan here. Let me get into this straight away. Google wasn't doing well with their smartphone line for many years, mainly due to one reason. They would release good phones which would take amazing pictures thanks to computational photography. But apart from that, from a hardware point of view, they were bland and especially expensive in the price to features department. Google understood the pulse of people by doing their own survey and understood that most people were not comfortable in paying a big premium for their smartphones. They changed their strategy last year by introducing the Google Pixel 4a with a mid-range Snapdragon 730G chip, which was a 2019 chip, and optimized it to the brim and delivered the same camera experience found on other Pixel phones for a very reasonable price of $349, which made it an instant hit among the masses. This year again with their flagship line, they have followed the same trend. You must be wondering, how could they price their entry-level flagship Pixel 6 at just $599 for the base variant? Well, this is what they did. A flagship chipset for a given year is always going to work out to be expensive, as it is the most powerful one in the market with all the latest advancements. After it is replaced the coming year, the price comes down drastically, as it is now considered as last year's technology. The Tensor chip used in the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro are manufactured by Samsung, and many, including myself, were speculating that it was a slightly modified version of the Exynos 2100 used in the Samsung S21 Ultra. Well, it's not. As a, if it were the same chip, the performance of the Samsung S21 Ultra Exynos and the Google Pixel 6 Pro would have been identical, given the specs are identical. Gary Sims performed a CPU and GPU test, where in the end, the Samsung S21 Ultra Exynos beat the Google Pixel 6 Pro by nearly 9 seconds, which means the chipset used in the Google Pixel 6 Pro is a modified version of Samsung's last year's flagship phone, the Note 20 Ultra. It's essentially a modified Exynos 990, idly an Exynos 990+, Plus, based now on the 5 nanometer process from the 7 nanometer used in the Exynos 990 of 2020. And of course, Google getting Samsung to customize it as per their preference to enhance the performance further. This explains how Google were able to price the new Pixel so competitively, as if they had gone with the latest Snapdragon 888 Plus of this year from Qualcomm, it would have worked out to be a lot more expensive. The Pixel 6 would have started at not less than $750 for the base variant, and the Pixel 6 Pro would have started at $1000 or even as high as $1050 for the base variant. What do you guys think? Am I correct or do you all have a different take on this? Let me know in the comments below. Most of the 800 series chips powering Android smartphones for the past few years are so powerful that you don't need the latest and greatest chip today to run all the essentials smoothly. Google, being the creator and supplier of Android, knows this very well and is now looking at efficiency and affordable costing to surge their smartphone line. My 4-year-old Pixel 2 XL still runs all the essentials fairly smoothly even today. How many of you still own or have owned Pixel smartphones? I'd like to know of your experience with it. Let me know in the comments below. So that's it for me today guys. I hope you guys liked the video. If you guys loved the video, I'd appreciate it if you guys could give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and do hit the bell icon so that you all get notified with the latest and greatest videos the second they uploaded on YouTube by me. So what else can I say? Wishing all of you a tremendous day ahead of you. Ciao for now.